Because we love something else more than this world we love even this world better than those who know no other. C.S. Lewis in D&D. The cleric is a healer, divine spellcaster, and sometimes melee fighter. It is a fantasy reimagining of the holy orders of the Knights Templar and Knights Hospitaller of medieval times. As the game has evolved, much of its power now comes through the specific focus of its worship which is represented mechanically by the cleric domain system. Dungeons and Dragons original and basic clerics debuted in original D&D. This class could wear heavy armor and use a shield. He was forbidden to use weapons that were not bludgeoning since clerics were said to desire avoiding bloodshed, even if they were evil clerics, with the only missile weapons being the very feeble sling or the bizarre staff sling godly for Stibulus. The cleric wore a holy symbol which he could use to turn away or destroy undead creatures. He could cast spells to mend wounds and cure ailments. He also had spells to protect and buff up the party, some spells to afflict opponents, and some utility spells. The cleric didn't get a lot of ranged attack spells, the exception being the very overpowered Flammer Strike. Many of the first edition cleric spells were patterned after legendary religious miracles. His excellent armor, good saving throws, and fair hit points made the cleric a decent frontline battle healer. In spite of, or rather because of this, most players didn't want to play a cleric because most of the time he was the only means of healing. And so he became nothing but a walking first aid kit. Really we should say she because parties often voluntold female gamers to play this class. Hello nurse, the 1980s. Man. Clerics were likewise present as a basic class in the Beckme branch. A generation of D&D newbies grew up on Frank Menzer's Alina with Larry Elmore's wide anime eyes, whom that edition killed off. The companion set posted the druid as a kind of prestige class for that but. Another story. Initially, clerics were restricted to humans, since race functioned as class in these versions of the game. However, Subsequent splat books would add clerical versions of Demi Human or Monster PCS. The Dwarfs of Rock Home debuted the Dwarf Cleric. Most non human clerics were called shamans, with even elves and shadow elves using this. However, issue number 178 of Dragon Magazine featured the elf cleric as part of the serial The Voyage of the Princess Arc. First edition, not much to say about Ad and D that wasn't said already. Except that the clerics got d8 hit points where the mold vaymenza sideline went with d6. And that ad and d allowed other races to branch out to whatever character class right off the bat. Dragonlance has clerics on again. Off again because its gods are dicks. The setting brings them back for you. After you find golden tablets in an ancient ruin. Because Tracy Hickman. Second edition and second edition add and D. Hybrid healer classes became more interesting to play than the baseline cleric. Already a hybrid as we've noted. The druid class got buffed. With several new powers not least Sharpa shifting. Da bears. Using ranged and powerful attack spells like fire seeds. Cool lightning. And the creeping doom. A druid could run your clerical elders all the way back to Salt Lake City. If you wanted to focus on the undead battling aspect, which druids don't got, you could play a paladin who had obtained a few upgrades not least better healing powers. Many players chose to play one of those other classes, where their combat clout or attack spells let them be somebody, instead of being Nurse Hello, RN, to staunch the mass apostasy. TSR released optional rules for priests of special mythoi, which allowed you to handpick your spells and new, otherwise unattainable buffs, right from the player's handbook. By using the rules in the Dungeon Master's Guide for creating a new character class, a player could create a lean but tough priest of a special mythos that advanced and level at a decent pace. In contrast, the baseline cleric only received a buff common to all priests. Extra bonus spells per day for having a high wisdom score. Setting by setting. Dark Sun is notable for having Templars instead of Clerics. These were bad guys so that setting was free to buff them as the plot needed. Third edition a Cleric can blow all the non full caster members of the party away by self buffing his stats. To the point where a single hit from his mace will hit with the fury of an angry god's fist. While shooting meter magic to irresistible fire out of his eyes. They are awesome. Though still behind druids who. In the 3.5 upgrade. 
got natural spell aka grow or Most of the third edition spells were in the second edition spellbook, but there were limitations that made the cleric more of a curiosity than a decent party contributor. But in third edition, if you don't have a cleric or druid in your group, your group tends to die. See, Godzilla. On a side note, clerics get proficiency in simple weapons, unless they get the war domain then they get their deity's favored weapon. While the obvious upgrade is they get some slashing options, dagger and sickle, and a slightly better range option, crossbow. Their best melee weapon is the long spear. This is where the d20 system comes in. So, in this context, Arcano unearthed ain't got em. There's religion in the diamond throne setting but that setting strongly implies all the priests are humbugs unless they take the mage priest prestige class. Meaning they've contracted out their souls to Kthalhu. Also to be noted is the midnight setting. Like Dark Sun and, when you start it, Dragonlance. Both post apoc worlds themselves. Most true clerics are legates who serve the darkest powers. 4th edition The 4th edition designers. Driven mad by how absolutely mandatory clerics were for any long term party. Decided to reshuffle roles in an attempt to give everyone the means to survive to some extent without needing a cleric. For the short term, there are now rules for resting that included non-pitiful amounts of healing outside of a battle. However, when inside a battle, there would be the need for more immediate healing. This is where the leader role came in. Warlords. Bards. Shamans. Ardents. Artificers. Runa priests. And, naturally, clerics. All classes of this role had a means to provide more on demand healing, and of course the cleric was among the front lines of this. Even among other leader classes, the cleric has a very open list of play styles. Between full up melee, divine lasers, healing, or something in between. It was easy to have multiple clerics who were dissimilar to each other. Your only constants were healing word, your healing power, your cleric lore, Either add your wis modifier to heals when they spend a healing surge to heal or plus 2 AC, scale armor, and let you and allies you heal get plus 2 to attack when you heal them, and channel divinity, a once per battle power that involved beseeching the gods for something, with feats offering equivalent powers from gods and domains. After D&D essentials showed up, the cleric was rebranded as the Templar and a new, non-eater system cleric variant class. The Warpriest came into being. The Warpriest had their domains baked into the class progression, though it's limited in scope with half of them being deities from Forgotten Realms. More than any other class before or after it, however, this class is absolutely crippled in the field of diversity. Once you select a domain, you are forcibly stuck into that domain's specific playstyle. So I hear you guys are into thick big titty wafers. Well we got you covered at nickbedgear.co.uk, one stop shop for Kumja models. However we do sell a lot more than just smart models we got everything for running any fantasy settings and even some not grim dark science fiction models. In fact we even have some anime inspired models and video game. But if models is not your thing we also have some role playing adventures and DND 5e meme subclasses. Also every video we will be giving away all our homebrew content to a subscriber of the channel. All you got to do to be in with a chance is subscribe. Today's winner is this guy. Well done. Claim your prize by contacting us via email at nickbedeercontact at gmail.com. Now let's get back to the video. 5th edition in 5th edition. They realized that clerics were the primary divine spillcasters the way wizards were the primary arcane spillcasters and decided to throw the clerics some firepower at lower levels, even adding a domain called the light domain that turns the cleric into a laser beam firing machine of death and radiant damage. So at this point, looking at the cleric and seeing nothing but a heal dispenser is like looking at a wizard and seeing nothing but a fireball dispenser they also used a nerf bat to break the kneecaps of all the buff spells making them much less op and therefore less aggravating than they were in 3.5 the end result is clerics that can do whatever they want thanks to domains actually doing something now from healing focus to investigation focus to i wish i was a druid focused oh and they can use a channel divinity class feature which has several functions. The first is shared by all subclasses, 
and is the turn undead feature of old. Each individual archetype also adds at least one additional function, since there's literally no other mechanical support to a cleric outside of their domain. Cleric players are perhaps the one 5e player type who would best be advised to look at older editions for character development ideas. Add and D and even 3e are both the premier source to look up symbols, vestments, ceremonies, beliefs and other details to flesh out what makes their cleric specifically tied to their chosen patron god. Even 4e's divine power is worth checking out because it actually has a pretty solid rundown of how domains work as something separates to alignments and how things like an evil god of freedom or a good god of destruction are possible. Pathfinder 1st edition Pathfinder play give and take with clerics. It reigned them in somewhat by taking their heavy armor proficiency though they could spend a fee to get it back, and as non-arcane casters they won't suffer for it while casting and nerfing several of their key spells. For example, Divine Power no longer sets their barb to full and only gives a type to hit bonus, but it also gave all clerics the favored weapon of their deity. Plus it buffed the domains. They're now only mostly on par with the other casters, if a little more melee capable than the average wizard, but that's still awesome. They still get domain powers, but turn undead is now channel energy. It basically lets them heal living creatures and hurt undead in a big radius with positive energy, or vice versa with negative energy. It made them superior healers, at the cost of an ability that only did anything if you were evil, and sucked at healing as a result. Or the GM threw hordes of weak undead at you, or you had feats to trade its uses for other broken stuff. They can also learn to channel those energies into other buffs and benefits too, or burn them for single target damage. Spheres of power on top of the changes to casting through spheres, the cleric gained a slower magic talent progression, gaining talents every even level rather than every level like other high casters. Instead, the sphere cleric gets two useful tools to help them compensate. Domains now provide a specific bonus sphere in talents at 1st, 5th, 9th, 13th and 17th level, and clerics can obtain the life or death sphere, life if they channel positive energy, death if they channel negative energy, and talents at 1st, 3rd, 7th, 11th, 15th and 19th level. The faithful shepherd archetype turns into a midcaster with the normal progression that entails 3 stroke 4 of a talent every level. Additionally, they only gain access to channel positive energy, and gain the protection and life spheres upon first obtaining the archetype. They even gain a series of special pseudo talents, divine works, to improve their capabilities. Second edition as any neckbud can attest, clerics have always had their toes in two worlds, focused on either being a frontline caster or being a holy wizard. Pathfinder second edition attempted to address this by splitting clerics into two subclasses. By by default, they lack any proficiency in armor and are only proficient in simple weapons and the gods favored weapon. Clerics have a rather limited skill list, with all clerics needing to take religion and whatever skill their god confers, as well as any skills from their background, and then letting them pick a number of skills equal to only 2 plus intelligence modifier. Clerics have access to the divine spell list, the worst spell list, and whatever spells their god confers. Yes, gods actually confer spells, it kinda is to offset how domains are cut down. Beyond that is also access to either the heal or harm spell. It's an amalgamation to the old class constant access to cure cause wounds and channel energy. See, depending on how many actions the cleric spends on the spell, it can range from just a mere heal hit with a touch to a full on burst that both heals and harms. By default this only works on living beings and the undead. But there are feats that let this also affect fiends and celestials as well as those that boost its effects and applications. Feats are also how clerics gain access to their god's domains. These domains are now a feat chain that gives special spells using focus points, giving you the choice on focusing on only one or on being diverse on domains. Now comes the division. At level 1, clerics choose between two doctrines, cloistered cleric and war priest. The cloistered cleric, for those that prefer pure spill casters, gains domain for free and gets the better casting save progression, making them more effective at blasting and debuffing. The war priest, 
on the other hand, gains the better combat proficiencies. This is the only way for clerics to start with armor and shield proficiencies, as well as a feat necessary for making shields actually effective for soaking damage, and gain martial weapon proficiency without wasting a feat, as well as the deadly simplicity feat, which lets those gods who prefer simple weapons make their weapons more deadly. Your spell casting DC progress is slower but you are harder to kill and make full use of that divine weapon and runes the DM gave you with less investment.